Welcome to Let's Talk About It Sunday, an extension of KELA's weekday local talk show featuring a variety of subjects of local interest. This program was pre-recorded, so we're unable to take live calls on today's show. And now, let's talk about it. Welcome to the Let's Talk About It show here on AM 1470 KELA, or maybe you're listening to KMNT 104.3. I'm your host, Peter Rabarno, on another edition of the Let's Talk About It show. Today, I have a special guest. Uh, It would be the first time I've ever interviewed someone of this type of royalty. It's Miss Lewis County Teen 2024. This is a new program within the Miss Lewis County uh, uh, organization or scholarship organization that they set up. And and we've had Miss Lewis County uh, on this show for many, many years. And we've talked about the gap between the kind of the Little Miss Friendly program and the Miss Lewis County and how they're, we wanted to make sure there were young women who were engaged in the program throughout the process because you learn so many life lessons, career skills. And this year we have the first Miss Lewis County teen, Capri O'Neill. Now, O'Neill may sound very familiar because last year, Miss Lewis County 2023 was my O'Neill, and now we have her sister who won the teen program. So with me today, Capri O'Neill. Capri, how are you today? I'm good, Peter. How are you? I'm doing fine. Are you excited to be on the Let's Talk About It show? I'm so excited. We we had a lot of fun before the show kind of doing the little prep stuff, and we talked a little bit about this new role you're going to have within our community because it's it's a lot of responsibility, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And so tell me a little bit about uh, what you hope to get out of the Miss Lewis County teen title. I just hope to be able to serve my community as much as possible and just have so much fun with it. Yeah. And, and, and a joyful or playful hope is kind of what Capri means, right? Yes. That's, that's what your, your mom told me that. Yeah. Yeah. And Capri's a unique name. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. It's not very common to hear someone's name Capri. And, but you say it's like Capri Sun. Yeah. I like to say it's Capri Sun because that's how it's spelled. Usually people get a little confused when they hear my name. Because they think of Capri Pants. Yeah. And you just correct them and say, no, it's like like the drink box. Exactly. I like I like Capri Suns more than Capri Pants. <laughs> well, me too. So, um, so tell me a little bit about why you got into this program, because it's a new program, newly set up. Uh, what made you want to participate? Watching my sister's year really just inspired me because I saw how much she grew. And so I wanted to grow just as much as that. And when they opened up the teen program, I just knew that I needed to get into it. Yeah, and, and it's pretty cool watching your sister. I mean, she did such an amazing job as a Miss Lewis County, and she was on the show right after she got crowned, and then she was on the show towards the end of her reign as Miss Lewis County 2023, and you can just see the kind of the growth, and so I would imagine you saw that as well. Yes, of course. Yeah, and do you, um, is it now going to be something that you're interested in and maybe taking it to the next level to, to maybe compete for Miss Lewis County 2025? Maybe. I'm not really sure yet, but I think this year I just want to make the most of it. Yeah. And and I think that's important. You look at the year in a snapshot and say, you know, what's the most good I can do in the time I have? And then we'll look at what we're going to do afterwards, right? Yeah. So uh, do you go to school? Yeah, I go to school at WF West High School and I'm a freshman. You're a freshman? Yes. How is uh, high school as a freshman? I love high school. <laughs> um. Really? Yeah. So what do you like about high school? Um, the friends I have. Because <laughs> high school's tough. I mean, not only do you have the, the, the life of being, you know, a teenager and high school and school and homework and you dance a lot. Yeah. So how often do you dance? I've been dancing six days a week uh, for years. And I've recently taken a step back from that so I can do this program and get the most out of it. Yeah. But dance will always be a part of me. Yeah. So you dance uh, six days a week, but probably a little less because of your now duties as Miss Lewis County teen. You go to school. Are you involved in any other activities outside of that? Uh, I'm also a cheerleader. Okay. A football, basketball? Both. Yeah. Both. And their competition team Which, for WF West. Oh, and so all three then? Yes. So what do you like most? Which one? I think football because there just feels like the most school spirit. I would think that football would be my least because of the weather. It's cold. And like a basketball cheerleader gets to be inside. 
I don't know. I love the football weather. Do you? Yeah. Well, it's in September, and that's when my birthday is. So maybe I'm just in a better mood. When's your birthday? September 29th. Mine's the 24th. We're almost twinning. We're almost twinning. <laughs> yes. And I think that's what everyone listening to Let's Talk About It was just thinking how Pierre <laughs> Bono and Capri O'Neill are twinning. Um, if you're just tuning into the show, uh, I'm your host, Peter Rivarno, and my special guest is Capri O'Neill. She is the new and first and only Miss Lewis County Teen 2024. It's a new program started by the Miss Lewis County Scholarship Program. Uh, and if you want to learn more about the program, you can go to MissLewisCounty.com. A great program. We just had the crowning of Miss Lewis County 2024 and yourself. Uh, what was your uh, talent? My talent was like this upbeat jazz dance to Let's Get Loud by Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. And and um, what made you pick that song and that dance? Well, honestly, I had no idea what to do. I knew I wanted to dance because that's what I've trained in for years. Yeah. Um, but I was just looking through Spotify trying to find a good song and I was looking through playlist. I was like, fun, upbeat jazz dances to dance to. And you picked that one? Yes. And that's pretty cool because your outfit was pretty bright and wild as well. Yes, I love that outfit. And when I say wild, I just mean it had lots of... Fringe. Fringe. Yes. I was good that. You took the words right out of my mouth because I didn't know what they were. But it has kind of a, a Latin style to it, right? Yes. Yeah. And so how long did it take you to practice that? I'm going to be completely honest. It took me a while to get some of those moves down. Well, I mean, like how long? Mm, like, took me 10 minutes to get one move down, but the rest was pretty easy. Oh, so so the, it took you 10 minutes? No, not you for You hear the whole it first? Day. Let's talk about it, uh, <laughs> listeners. It took her 10 minutes to get her entire talent down for a brand new song and outfit. It, it, was, it was really yeah. phenomenal, and you could actually go... And, and look at some of the photos were in the Chronicle and, and on the MissLewisCounty.com uh, page of your performance. It was it was really f well done. I mean, it was exciting. You were jumping all over the place, um, even though it only took you 10 minutes to lock that thing down. Um, what kind of dance is it? Like, is it what style was it? I call it jazz. Okay. But it was it seemed to be something a little bit more than the traditional jazz. Or is it just kind of fast paced jazz? Maybe. I don't really know what you Lopez call it. Lopez jazz. Yeah. We'll call, call it, it Jennifer that. Lopez jazz. Yeah. Uh, is that your favorite style of dance? To perform, probably, but I also really love tap dancing and tumbling. Like, yeah. And what, what what's tumbling? Is that kind of just tumbling? tumbling? <laughs> it, it, it's basically like the floor version, like the floor portion of gymnastics. Mm-hmm. So okay. It's like backflips. So <laughs> what what kind of dance does your sister do? My sister mostly does ballet and yeah. lyrical. Okay. And yeah. modern. And so do you dance that style as well or do you yes. focus on these? I dance those styles as well, but I prefer jazz and tap over it. Yeah. Um did you were you able to look at some of the other contestants and their their um their talents as well and and be able to kind of obviously you don't compare yourself to others you just try to do the best you can but um what other talents from other contestants kind of stood out to you Honestly I really loved all of them Yeah. and how their personalities showed through it Yeah. I mean I I thought some of the um the speaking um talents regarding the one especially the one about you know self-image and and propping yourself up was a good one yeah um i thought uh there were there, there was just a number Obvi obviously caitlin gunther's was pretty impressive it was yeah because i can't sing or play an instrument so i thought anything like that's impressive it is um so what about your uh community service initiative now every contestant has to pick a com community service initiative what was yours my community service initiative is advocating for children in need of eye care and eyewear. Okay. And I chose that because I was diagnosed with amblyopia when I was two years old, and that's lazy eye. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to be a good role model and bring confidence to other children who wear glasses. And and that's uh, uh, and, and that's more than just kids with with glasses, right? Because you and I talked a little bit before the interview that it has impacted your ability to play some sports and do some activities because of the depth perception issues. Yes. So talk a little bit more about kind of the, you know, the more serious side of that. 
Yeah, it does limit you from many things like being able to play sports. Mm -hmm. But I think finding a good hobby or something that you enjoy can um, like substitute that. Yeah. Yeah. And and, I, and you've done that, right? I mean, yeah. you may not be playing fast pitch, for instance, but you're able to cheer, you're able to do dance and you're able to do so many other activities. Yeah. So do you, do you wear uh, do you wear contacts? Do you wear glasses? How, how do you cope with the kind of the vision side of that? So I've worn glasses my whole life, but I recently switched to contacts just because it's easier to dance in because mm -hmm. if you can imagine doing flips glasses can fall off your face really right. easily yeah uh, so it's just easier for that portion now have you ever thought about it getting like prescription uh, sports goggles i've wanted to before but i don't think i swim enough for that yeah but what well what about getting them for dancing because then they won't fall off your face that's true but I think that's really similar to like a glasses strap. Because I've seen those in like basketball players with the really? who wear glasses and they they wear goggles. No, I mean you could dance to under the sea. True, I that's mean, a good idea. But it, I mean, when you look at you, you can't you can't tell. Uh, uh, is, is it something that you're self conscious about, or I mean? I mean, I'm saying it now because you and I joked a little bit about it. And we taught, we had some really in depth, good conversations about it. But is it something you're self conscious about? I am self-conscious about mm -hmm. my vision and how my eyesight looks when my eye does uh, sink in a little bit. Yeah. But I think that's why I chose my initiative to help other kids not feel as self-conscious about it and to know that it's okay and mm -hmm. it's normal and that wearing glasses can be pretty stylish. They, well, they can because I wear glasses when I'm not wearing contacts too. Um, and And so... Have you, is there an association or is there, a, have you met other, other kids and students and young women who maybe have the same, same issue? I know a lot of people that have lazy eye, mm -hmm. but as my year for Miss Lewis County's teen, I want to partner with the Lions Club because what they do is they collect used glasses frames and um, donate them to children in need. Yeah. And... I just I want to go into schools and just educate people on this topic. And I would imagine there is a lot of students who don't get diagnosed early enough and they go into school and classes and they, you know, they're young and they're maybe not doing well in school or they're having behavioral problems. And a lot of it could be because of their vision and they don't, they were not, uh, there was an early identification. There wasn't any early treatment to make sure they have the right glasses or the right, you know, um, uh, medical condition pres prescribed or identified. So I think you bringing attention to this is going to help a lot of students who maybe not just have a lazy eye, but generally don't think about how your vision can impact your behavior, your education, and everything else. Yes, definitely. I mean, I, it's something that even I have not really thought a lot about until you and I had this conversation about what a great community service initiative because it's kind of one of those things that you don't really think about you think about ADHD, you think about all these other conditions that you know, unfortunately a lot of students get 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 um, diagnosed with, but it could be something like that that is just getting overlooked. Yeah, I'm really excited to bring awareness to this. Yeah, I'm excited for it too. I think it's going to be really good. So let's talk about some of your other um, initiatives or other things that you want to do in Lewis County. You're going to have your community service, service initiative, but I mean, you're going to be one busy young lady. I mean, you're going to have the fairs and the parades and everything else. I mean, are you excited for that? I'm really excited for all of it. I'm sure your parents are too. This is year two for them. Yeah. They get to, they get to do it all <laughs> over again. So Maya actually broke the seal on that. So they, they've gone through it once. Um, you were with her at some of these events. So yes. what did you learn about it? Well, when I was watching Maya do it, I just thought it looked like so much fun and I couldn't wait till I was old enough to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're just tuning in to Let's Talk About It on AM 1470 KELA or KMNT 104.3, I'm your host, Peter Rabarno, on another Let's Talk About It with this week's guest, 
Miss Lewis County teen, Capri O'Neill. She is the first Miss Lewis County teen since they just started the program through the Miss Lewis County Scholarship Organization. And if you want to learn more about the organization or maybe a little bit more about uh, Capri O'Neill, you can go to MissLewisCounty.com. You are listening to Let's Talk About It Sunday, an extension of KELA's weekday local talk show. Stay tuned. Let's Talk About It Sunday edition will return in a moment. Okay, and now back to business. Listen on the air and online. Online. K E L A. Let's talk about it. Good morning. You're listening to Let's Talk About It Sunday, an extension of KELA's weekday local talk show. This program was pre recorded, so no live phone calls on today's show. All right, we're back on the Let's Talk About It show. I'm your host, Peter Rubarno, with Capri O'Neill, the Miss Lewis County Teen 2024. So you were asked a lot of questions. You went through a whole question and answer interview process. Yes. Nervous? <laughs> yes. How nervous? Well, I was really nervous going into it. But once I stepped in the room, I just felt peace. And I just felt like I was having a conversation with all of them. Kind of like on Let's Talk About It. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. So what was the hardest question you got? Um. I wouldn't say it was the hardest, but the one that stuck out to me, I got asked, if I was a crayon, what color would I be and what would I name it? And that's just like something I would never even think of. What'd you say? I said I would be a pink crayon. Mm -hmm. Uh, My favorite color has always been pink. Even when I was younger, I would go up to my parents or Maya and I'd be like, you know what, mom? I am pink. Pink. So it's more than just my favorite color. Like I've even. It's like your attitude. Exactly. Nice. And so what would be, what would you name your crayon? I told them that I'd name it Capri Pink just because it seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Coming from someone named Capri. (laughs) If I had a crayon, I'd maybe call it Peter Pink. Exactly. Who who knows? That that has a good ring to it. You never know. I mean, it's an interesting, I used to always, when I used to do the mock judging, I used to try to ask like, questions that would like throw off it like i would say what are you wearing and why did you choose that outfit and they would some some of them some of them would think that it was a negative thing but a lot of times you pick your clothes because you pick your ad right it's part of your attitude and it's because you like it uh but it would throw some people off because they would think it would be like a mean question but i just wanted to know why they chose it and so i used to try to find things that were just questions that maybe you don't get asked very often i like those questions too because it kind of shifts where my mindset is at. Yeah, because I think when you go into those conversations and the interviews, um, you're expecting something about a current event, something political or scientific or a current event, something going on. So when you get thrown more of a, 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 a maybe a philosophical or, or a sociological question, I think it kind of grounds you back to kind of a something you may not have thought about, but it's kind of neat, like what color crayon you would be and how you would name it, right? Yeah. Kind of, kind of neat. What was your favorite part of the whole process? Was it the interview? Was it uh, fitness? Because that was a new one. Was it evening gown? Was it talent? What's your favorite part of the process? I don't know if I can pick a favorite. I really did love fitness. I had a lot of fun with that and getting to pick out a dress for evening wear. I guess my favorite would be talent just yeah. because that's what I feel most comfortable in. And I've been performing on a stage for so many years. It's just like my second home. Yeah. And you uh, had how many other contestants performing with you in the teen program? There were four other contestants. So five total? Yes. And did you create, you know, because I've heard this, you create almost like a sisterhood. You rely so much on each other. Uh, It's very emotional. So you kind of create little bonds. Yeah. I've um, grown so much with all the other girls and they've supported me. It's yeah. been great. Well, and I think it's something that when you go through this process, um, it sticks with you for many, many years, maybe forever where you have that bond. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And one of the best parts of, you know, creating this bond is that you get to help each other and and you rely on each other to be better. Because one, one of the things that I always appreciated about this whole competition was that you're competing really with yourself. You're not competing against somebody. You're just trying to be the best you can be. And it shows on stage when you're all supporting each other. Yeah. Yeah. And and did you hear that from your sister as well as she went through that process? Yeah. And yeah. also my 
my sister was there for all of the workshops when we were preparing and she was also a big support to all of the contestants and just having that like backbone yeah. there was great now you talk about how your sister supported you but it, it, she also sabotaged your dress <laughs> uh because as i hear the story um her animal uh like ate a hole in your dress yeah i was really offended about that yeah yeah, I, I, mean, I was debating if it was sabotage from her, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I mean, I think she was jealous, maybe, maybe a Ma little bit. I mean, so so it's kind of like she just couldn't release. She was white knuckling that crown, like I'm not giving it up. And I feel like she might have put some catnip on my dress. Do you think she did? No. I mean, we can investigate <laughs> it. I mean, we could we could find out. I mean, you heard it here first on Let's Talk About It. There may have been some sabotage, but you persevered and you won the Miss Teen program despite your sister sabotage. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the four points of the crown. One of the things I always like to ask uh, the contestants when they come on the show is the four points of the crown are really important for the entire program from Miss America to Miss Washington to Miss Lewis County. Uh, what are the four points and, and which one's most important to you? The four points of the crown are scholarship, success, service, and style. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're all really important to me and that you need them all to balance everything out. Mm -hmm. My favorite, I do really like service yeah. and I look forward to serving my community as much as possible this year. Well, most certainly we, we look forward to you um, being of service to our community, especially with your community service initiative, which I think is unique and I think it's going to have a huge impact on students uh, for sure. I, and I know it will. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the other things, uh, that you maybe didn't expect out of the program. You know, you, you fill out your application process and I'm just assuming that's how this works because yes. I haven't done it myself. I haven't applied to be a miss, <laughs> but you fill out your application, you kind of get started. And then what, what, what's something that really surprised you about the program that you didn't expect? I Honestly, I don't know if anything really did surprise me just because Maya went through it mm -hmm. and I saw her go through it and I was there with her. So I really did know what to expect. Yeah. Well, let's let's put it this way. Um, if if you're a young woman uh, listening to the show, because obviously that's my demographic, um, and you're considering maybe you want to be a Miss Teen or Miss Lewis County, you know, what advice would you give them? I mean, you you had a little bit of a window into the process prior to, to running yourself. But for someone who doesn't know anything about the program, really, what, what's kind of what is some of that advice you would give them? I would just tell them to keep pushing through no matter how hard they think it is. The process, you do a lot of paperwork and that was a lot for me just because I'm more of a performer and mm -hmm. less of um, an English type person <laughs> like I don't like writing essays but we had to write an essay so you didn't, you didn't like the process of the academic side of it yeah, yeah, yeah. but I was willing to do it yeah and so it got you out of your comfort zone yes okay and what did you, what was your essay on it was on my community service initiative okay so that was at least something that interests you yes it was you know. good because I'm really passionate about it so I knew what to write to fill up the essay good okay well so so would you would you advise like if, if if someone just came off the street and said, hey, I'm thinking I want to run. What's the one piece of advice that you would give me? What would you say to them? I just tell them to do it. Yeah, just do it. Just, just don't do it. give up. Just jump in. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, and again, I mean, I think one of the things that that happens with this program is that you build these kind of skills you're, I mean, the, the, the kind of the career skills, the lifelong skills that you learn are, are something that you just mentioned. The fact that you're not kind of an academic process person, like you don't like writing papers. Right. Nobody does really. Except um, for Maya. Except for Maya. Yeah, yeah. Well, we won't talk about her. She sabotaged your dress. <laughs> um, but, you know, but it forced you out of your comfort zone to do it and you're going to be better for it. Yeah. All right. What about what about uh, your support group? I mean, talk about your folks and your family and your friends. I mean, how have they been in terms of supportive of your adventure into this new uh, realm? My family is definitely my biggest support group. No matter what I choose to do, they're always there for me and willing to build me up and just support me. My friends, too. They're really good about that. 
Yeah. And your mom's here today in studio, too. Yeah. Does she go with you to a lot of things? Yes, I think so. Yeah. And she's got to be pretty excited for you. I hope so. What about your dad? I think my dad's excited for me, too. Yeah. I mean, they looked pretty excited at the event for you. I mean, it's a, it's a big, big deal. I mean, it's it's and it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be great for you. And then you also have an organization around you. You have Shelly Ford with us, right? Yes. And so you have an organization where you have people who go to events with you and help get you ready and, and get you prepped to these things. So that's got to be comforting. Yeah, it's really comforting. And I just appreciate all of the support so much. Yeah. And when I talked to Kaylee Gunther, who's the Miss Lewis County 2024, I mean, one of the things that she was very excited about is the fact that she's got a friend to do things with. Yes. Where now you have a teen program. Before, it was just her going off and doing events. But now I'm assuming a lot of these events you two will do together. Yeah. I think we're going to do a lot of the events together. I'm so excited about that because I'll just have a partner. Yeah. No, having that support group is really important because, you know, especially as parade season comes around and then the fair, you're going to be really, really busy. So having somebody there, you know, to kind of go through the experience with is going to yeah. be a lot of fun. And I love hanging out with my friends at the fair. So Caitlin will be my friend at the fair this year. That's right. And, and so your friends have to be very excited for yes. you. So when you went back to school, back to WF West after you won, I mean, what were some of the things people were saying? Uh, every person I walked past in the hall, they were just like, congratulations, Capri, congratulations. And I would look at some of them and I'm like, I don't even know you. <laughs> but, but they know you. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. felt a little famous. It was, it was nice because I felt the support at school too. Yeah. And so, yeah. And, and, and WF West is a, a good school. The Shale School District's a great district. Um, they're, I, I assume, really very happy for you and supportive yes. throughout the process. Because I see them on social media. I mean, they're sharing a lot of your yeah. stuff, too. They're pretty excited about it. Uh, did you wear your sash to school? No. What about your crown? No. You're not, I don't think you're allowed to, I don't think to, we're right? allowed to do that. No. But it would still be pretty cool. It would be pretty funny. It would be pretty funny. Um, have you run into any little girls on the streets or, or kids who are just super excited to see, like, a princess? Um, not yet. You will. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, the little little girls especially, uh, they get super excited because they think you're like a Disney princess. So that's, I, I've been to events um, and it's a lot of fun because you not only are the princess kind of they, they kind of dream about, but you end up being such a positive role model for them, especially when you get into their classroom and start talking about the, the, the serious uh, issues that can help them out. Yeah. And I think I was one of those little girls too. And I've wanted to be Miss Lewis County since I was six years old. So the process of Miss Lewis County teen opening up, I was really excited that I was able to do that even earlier. Do you remember uh, a Miss Lewis County ever coming to your school and presenting or when the first time you maybe saw your first Miss Lewis County? Um, I remember watching a ton of the pageants, but I was homeschooled for most of my life. So yeah. I never really saw them come to school. But you saw them at the pageants or maybe out at community events, maybe. Yeah. Did you ever do the Little Miss Friendly program? I wanted to, but I never got to it. My younger sister, Lily, was a little sister for one of the years. Oh, sure. How many How many siblings do you have? I have three siblings. So obviously we know about Maya. Yeah, we know then, about Maya. And then I have an older brother, Evan. He's Evan. a senior this year. He's a senior? Yeah. And then my younger sister, Lily, and she's in seventh grade. Oh, cool. She's got to be super excited yes. for it. Do, is, she, uh, is she in the dance program as well? She was when she was younger, but not anymore. She plays volleyball. So is that going to be her talent at the Miss Lewis County uh, pageant maybe. 2029 or I think she or wants 20... to run. So. I, I, well, look, I mean, maybe there's royalty in your blood. Maybe the whole family maybe. Will, will end up being. Well, look, Capri, um, we're, we're, we got to wrap up the show, but why don't you uh, say uh, something to all the Lewis County listeners uh, to the show about kind of what you hope to uh, see and meet them uh, this coming summer. Yeah, I just really hope to meet you all, and I can't wait to serve our community and just spread awareness to my community service initiative. Thank you. Capri, thank you for joining me. Thank you. That was Capri O'Neill, Miss Lewis County Teen 2024. Uh, if you want to learn more about the Miss Lewis County pageant uh, or the Miss Lewis County Teen pageant, be sure to visit MissLewisCounty.com. You're listening to the Let's Talk About It show on AM 1470 KELA and 104.3 KMNT. I'm your host, Peter Rabarno. I hope you have a great day.